Got grains left over for making beer? Do a second running or a small beer. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Steading Brews. Today, we're following up from our barley wine experiment by using those grains, because there were a lot of grains, and we're making a small beer. A lot of people have been asking me about doing this, and I thought, what an opportunity. By the way, if you hear like a crackling in the background, that is the pot of water for mash-in heating up because there was some water on the bottom of it. So it's going to make a little bit of noise. I apologize if you can hear that. Um, but a lot of people have been asking what to do with the grains afterwards. Now this works for barley wines as well as basically any normal gravity beers. Back in the day they used to make three runnings from a beer. A five to six percent, maybe a two to three percent, and then one that was like one percent. And that's where the idea that people drank beer all the time came from. Sure, if you drink a one percent beer you can drink a lot of beer. It's pretty least... much the medieval equivalent of soda. Yeah, I like that. Um, I mean, you could drink five times as much as a 5% and have the same effect, which is a lot of beer. So anyway, what we have in here is our bag of grains from the barley wine, okay? They've just been sitting in here. Some liquid has come out, which is good. What we're going to do is remash this. So I'm bringing water up to about 180 degrees. This is gonna go back into our cooler. We're gonna pour that water over these grains. We're gonna let that mash for about an hour. It's gonna hopefully get to about 160 degrees or so. That's about where I want it to be. What we're doing is reinstituting those uh, enzymes to pull the starches out again and convert them into sugar. Whatever's left, plus the little bit that's left on the grains from the original, kind of doing a sparge, if you will. And we're gonna make another one gallon batch so uh, let's head over and uh, see how this goes. Okay, so what we have is our water that's at 180 degrees. It's called strike water at that point. And I'm going to pour it into this cooler, which holds the bag. Now you might notice that this water looks a little brownish already. Well, guess what? It's the same pot that we did our boil in for the barley wine, because there's no harm. It just doesn't really matter at this point. It's all the same stuff. So I'm just pouring it in. If anything, I got a little extra sugars in there or something maybe. I don't know. Now that it's in there, what I want to do is give it a good mix around. I know those grains were already wet from before, but I want to make sure that that water can get to them so that we get a really good mash. And again, all we're doing at this point is hoping the water cools down to about 160 degrees or so, which it, it probably already is. And it's going to sit for an hour, letting those enzymes go to work on the starches, converting them into sugar. So I'm going to put the lid back on. Close it up, see you in an hour. Okay, so the mash-in process is now done. It's been about an hour. It's sitting in the cooler right down here. We are gonna pull that grain bag out in a minute and do all that stuff, but I wanted to talk a little bit about what we're gonna do next and what this is gonna be. The other one was kind of a chocolate stout type of thing. Well, that's the barley wine. Well, for the second runnings and the small beer, I'm thinking peanut butter chocolate. I've tried to research how exactly to put peanut butter into a beer and gotten varying results. I ended up using with the idea of the powder. This is True Nut Powdered Peanut Butter. It's chocolate flavor, so it's actually chocolate and peanut butter in one. I am gonna add cacao nibs too, but I'm using this. And I'm only using about half an ounce of it because it seems like it's gonna be really strong, so I don't want it to overpower and just become like a, you know, Reese's peanut butter cup in here, which, you know, could be interesting too. But I just wanted to enhance the flavors and add to it. So I just thought I'd go over that a little bit before we get too much further. Another thing that I did is while the barley wine was boiling, we took hops, one ounce of the Cascade hops, put it in some water and boiled that along with the other one. Not, at this, not in the same pot, at the same time. So it's just water and hops boiled for a solid hour because this is going to be a raw ale. What's a raw ale? Good question. A lot of Europe actually does beer this way. Not Germany, but much of Europe actually does. And what it is, is basically after you do the mash-in process, you don't boil. People boil beer for some reason. I don't really know why, other than the only thing I can figure is maybe the water might have been slightly questionable, so they do that for sterilization kind of thing. Or... I don't know. In our barley wine, we boiled it to concentrate the sugars. There was a reason. For this one, I thought, there is no reason to boil it. So I'm not gonna. 
So instead, what I'm going to do now is try to um, extract the bag. Somebody said we need a bigger studio. You know what? I can't actually disagree. <laughs> so if anybody really wants to spring to buy us a new house that has a bigger area for a studio, I'm actually okay with that. <laughs> I don't really expect anybody to do it, but that's the only way we're going to get a bigger studio. I will apologize for the view of my chest rather than my face. This is probably still quite hot. Yeah, it is. So I'm just going to try to grab this bag carefully. We just want to drain it. Now, this is going to be our fermenter right here. So I'm actually going to drop it into the colander and let it drain into that for a little while. Because all that liquid coming out, that is our fermentables. That's our sugars. That's what we want. So I'm just going to let this drain some more. We've already got probably a good like pint of liquid out of it. Um, you can squeeze it. You can push it a little bit if you want to. I wouldn't really like totally wring it out, squeeze it. But like what I'm doing here, just a little bit because there could be some uh, astringency that could come out from, ow, it's hot, from the uh, mash itself. Some people say that, so I don't, I don't like to push too hard. But wow, there's a lot of liquid in there still. Now, what can you do with these grains afterwards? These are still good grains. I mean, you can make bread with it. You can make granola bars with it. We did that. Um, you can feed it to your chickens. You can put it in your compost. You can put milk. Put it on milk and have it as cereal. I mean, there's so many things you can do with this stuff. Put it it's, on yogurt. Put it on yogurt. I could probably sit here for a while squeezing this and get more out. However, I'm not that patient. So I'm going to grab a bowl. We're going to put that in there and move forward. Now, at this point, some people will say you should sparge. I'm not on purpose because I don't want to dilute the liquid. I actually just want to keep as much liquid as I can. And out we go. Done. And then we're going to put this liquid into that bucket carefully so as not to drench Derica with this sugary stuff. This is a two gallon bucket, so one gallon probably be about there, and we made it. I did about one and a half to gallons. About there. It's okay, it's not so bad. But what I want to do now is kind of get an idea of the gravity of this beer, just to make sure that it's actually going to be able to ferment. It's still pretty warm, so we're going to have our temperature differential, but point-wise, it's, it's not going to be that different. pretty minimal. Yeah, I mean, it's probably like 130 degrees now, but I am going to pour in our hops water at this point, making this more like two gallons. And that had chunks and everything. I'm not going to worry about it because it's going to... Do you want to stir? Dry hop and all that kind of thing. Yeah, give it a stir. All this stuff has been sanitized, by the way. And putting that water in there, which was room temperature now, that'll cool it down some, too. Basically, you don't want to pitch your yeast until it's about 110 degrees or lower. Lower is better, but it doesn't really matter. Be below 110. That way you won't kill them. So this is probably going to be gloopy. Normally when we're stirring in a plastic vessel, we want to use a rubber or a plastic spoon because the metal spoon could scrape it. So this is probably going to be a pretty low gravity beer, which, you know, second runnings are that way. Pretty reasonable. 1.026. All right, that'll come out to like, I don't know, like 3%. That's really not bad. All right, so put that in there, put that back in there. And as promised earlier, we are going to be using some of this powder. And that's another reason why I wasn't too worried about the goop. And, I mean, honestly, I forgot. But I'm going to make it sound like I knew what I was doing. Because this is going to make a lot of goop, too. It just is. And then, that's the peanut butter powder, by the way, as we talked about earlier. And I'm also going to add in the uh, cacao nibs. How the, much was that? That is one ounce of cacao nibs and half an ounce by weight of the peanut butter powder. And now, I'm just going to mix this up. Oh wow, it smells amazing already. It smells like chocolate peanut butter. Yay! With beer. Which <laughs> sounds kind of weird, but it's actually supposed oh, yeah, to be really yeah, You're doing the same thing I was doing earlier. Metal spoon, plastic bucket. She's right. Okay. Into that, 
I'm going to put my yeast. I'm using half a packet because I'm making, you know, roughly a gallon. Might be a little bit more than a gallon. And I'm using Safeale SO4 yeast, which is a beer yeast. It's made for this kind of thing, so it should work just fine. I had an open packet that's been in the fridge, so I'm just going to use this. And again, not hydrating my yeast. I'm being a rebel and just pouring it right in. It just feels so wrong to do that. <laughs> but hey, you know what? It works. I'm not scraping the bottom this time. But I have yeast on the spoon. I'm just going to mix it in. Then, put on a lid. And airlock. We filled this with sanitizer liquid. Just going to jam it into the grommet in the lid here. And there we go. Now, being that this is a small beer and there's not a lot of potential sugars in it, I'm not expecting this to take real long. I'll probably give it like a week. It might sit for two, but it should only take about a week. And then we'll take another gravity reading, make sure it's done, and we'll show you how to naturally carb and bottle this. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.